All right. Okay. So I actually misread this. Um, picking back up at 11. This is F double prime of 2. Let me just write that bigger. Big F double prime of 2. So now I can just continue with what I was doing. We established the first time that the derivative of F, big F, was the derivative of this first integral, which was little f of x. And that was just normal fundamental theorem. So I'm going to write over here that f prime of x is little f of x. f double prime of x will now be the derivative of f of x. Which, let me go ahead and write over here, is the derivative of the integral from 1 to t squared of root 1 plus u to the fourth over u du. And the fundamental theorem says to evaluate this, I'm going to plug in t squared. So I've got the square root of 1 plus t squared times u to the fourth, uh, sorry, t squared to the fourth, which is t to the eighth over t squared times the derivative of t squared, which is 2t. All right. So let's go ahead and plug in 2 finally, um, because there's really no point in sorting this all out until we plugged in 2. This is the square root of 1 plus 2 to the 8th over 4 times 4. 2 times 2. The 4s cancel, uh, and you're welcome to leave it as the square root of 1 plus 2 to the 8th. I do not expect you to know what 2 to the 8th is. All right, moving on to number 12. Hopefully that was... That was okay. That was a little crazy. And the type is really hard to see. All right, this is more like the traditional fundamental theorem problems we were looking at, right? G of x is the integral from 0 to x of f of t. And what we're looking at right here, f. So this is f, which, if we do a little fundamental theorem really quickly, if g of x is the integral, g prime of x is the derivative of the integral of 0 to x f of t dt. So g prime of x is f of x. This is a derivative. All right. Okay. Evaluate g of 0, g of 1, g of 2, g of 3, g of 6. Now we're talking areas. So the area, if I plug in 0, if I plug in 0 here, the integral from 0 to 0 will be 0 because there's no area from one point to itself. The integral from 0 to 1, which is what's going to happen if I plug 1 in here, from 0 to 1 is, just based on this graph, 2. 1 times 2. The, so I'm going to write that right there. The integral from 0 to 2, uh, if I go ahead and add this uh, trapezoid to it, uh, the area of this trapezoid is 2 plus 4, which is 6, divided by 2, so that's 3. So now from 0 to 2, I've got 2 plus 3, which is 5. All right, the integral from 0 to 3, we're going to add on yet another one. Now we're going to add on a triangle. The area of this triangle is 1 half base, which is 1, times height, which is 4. So half of 4 is 2. And so from 0 to 3, the integral is going to be 2 plus 3 plus 2, which is 7. All right, now the integral from 0 to 6, which is this last one. So I've already got 7 up here. This whole thing is 7. And then down below, what do I have? Well, it's another trapezoid. Uh, the base of the trapezoid is 1, 2, 3, 4 units long. The top is 1, so 4 plus 1 is uh, 5. So it's um, the height, which is 2 over 2 times 5. So this area right here is 5, which is really negative 5. So from 0 to 6, I've got 7 plus negative 5, and that will be 2. All right, on what interval is, uh, it just says increasing, is it increasing? Uh, by that, I'm going to assume they mean g of x. So g of x increases when f of x, because that's the derivative, is positive. And I don't need to explain that further because over here I have that information. So when is f of x positive? It's above the x-axis or positive from 0 to 3. Um, so I'm going to write that from 0 to 3. 
where does uh, have a minimum value? Minimum values occur when the derivative, meaning this graph, goes from negative to positive, below to above. That never occurs. It can also occur at its endpoints, which um, I'm kind of assuming here are um, 0 and 6, because I don't, I don't see anything. We really should write this for you, 0 to 6. Um, so 0 could be a minimum because it has positive slope after 0, and so it's increasing. 6 can be a minimum because it has negative slope below, so it's decreasing, uh, sorry, to the left, so it's decreasing before we get to 6. Um, which one's more of a minimum? Oh, and I'm doing this whole thing and I'm re misreading the problem. They're asking me when does it have a maximum value. So this is a potential min, this is a potential min, and this, because we're going from positive to negative, is actually a max. So the maximum value will be x equals 3 because g prime changes from positive to negative. Okay, sketch a rough graph of g. I don't need you to do this. This isn't in our unit right now, so don't worry about that.